Welcome to the AME Food Safety Show. Listen to the music of someone who is pleading for somewhere over the rainbow. He wants to know where there's something wonderful. Listen to that empathy for us in our world today. Let's begin with our topic, which is what chemicals are inside of soda pop. First slide. What chemicals? When you go out to eat, what do they ask you? What would you like to drink? What are the options? My, nine times out of ten, it's either going to be a Coke or a Pepsi product. You're going to be buying it from a machine. You have to, they're issuing you a cup, and you are manually serving yourself or someone will go get it from you from one of these machines. What should be your thoughts what information can I give you to help you improve on your own food safety choices when it comes to one of these machines? On the far right, you will see a machine which is one of the revolutions of our modern commercial beverage product line. That is a computerized dispenser based on your tactile choice by picture of what mixture you'd like. Because if you look on the left, the Pepsi and Coke products, you're going to see an option of either standardized Pepsi products or standardized Coke products. Let's look at, what's my question? What's inside those chemicals, that concoction that they're making for you? And is it just flavor and what is known as fizz? Next slide. Well, what's the chemistry of soda? Basically, essentially, it's a sweetener a bit of flavoring and carbon dioxide gas. At least that's what they would like us to believe, which gives the beverage that you're preparing for yourself a fizz. You know how it bubbles, and then it makes a nice little tingling feeling once you go inside of yourself. So that is what we as consumers are expecting. Are we getting anything else out of that mixture? Next slide. First, let's talk about sweeteners. There are various kinds of sweeteners that offer you a, a sweet sort of taste. What we have are two distinctions. One is a chemical composition, and the other is a natural type of sweetener. You know, the honeys, brown, processed sugars, different types of chemicals that come from nature or a byproduct of insect manufacture which we respond to by liking it more. On the right-hand side of this slide, what you're going to see is raw honey, maple syrup from a tree, molasses from a tree, agave nectar from a plant, coconut from a tree, date sugar, the fruit of a tree, and applesauce, the juice of a tree's fruit. They're all different. They all give you a different response. Some are more popular than others. Diet soda is a completely different concoction. Why? Because it uses chemical sweeteners. I mean, a chemist has gone down there and designed sweeteners, which are there later patented by the companies, and they offer an intense reaction. The flavoring that could be offered are generally secret. In other words, they keep them they don't patent them because patents only last X number of years. They hide them. You will never know what's inside of it. The only thing, remember the Coke and Pepsi taste tests many years ago? Put a blindfold and make those taste tests. What were they looking for? Consumer response. Sugars and flavoring are different. Next slide, please. What's a flavor? A flavor is anything that the consumer likes to taste when they're drinking the beverage. It could be cinnamon, oranges, walnuts, strawberries, anything. On the right-hand side, you see caramel in its natural form, if that can be considered natural. Other types of sweeteners 
are different than flavors. Flavors is what you like to taste. Soda pop products take the most powerful, the most intense flavors and combine them and then taste them, test them against consumers to see which ones are most sellable. Next slide. What about the gas? Now, if you think of carbon dioxide, wait a minute. I thought ex-Vice President Gore was going to collect a tax on gas. Hopefully, it's not on this gas. But the bottom line, that's kind of a joke there. The bottom line on carbon dioxide gas was something that was discovered many years ago and that we could consume was mixed in a process, patented here in the United States. And it makes the beverage fizzy. If you over open a soda can and it pops open and everything splashes about, that's what that carbonization, that carbon dioxide gas carbonated water mix does. It's a very effective preservative. That's why you can have soda pop for a very long time and it'll still retain its primary qualities of that fizziness. It does improve the taste and intensifies and increases the overall lifespan of the beverage. But no, do not think about drinking carbon dioxide gas in that form. You will have injury or harm. Next slide. Here's an interesting slide that I found, and you see the reference down below. These are essentially negative perspectives of the consumption of soda pop. Phosphoric acid, I've said this before, it weakens your bones and it rots your teeth out. That's why you need to brush your teeth. My wife constantly reminds me to brush my teeth. It offers an excessive artificial sweetener. All soda pops do that. Why? They're chemically designed to make you buy more. And that's what it is. It's addictive, in other words. Anything that cr you crave is addictive, and therefore it's better for business, worse for you in many respects. The coloring is the effect of mixing various things. That's why I call it a concoction. At one time in the United States, soda could only be administered at a soda bar, B-A-R. And the reason, the primary reason that we had that was the prohibition. We also threw in powdered cocaine, believe it or not, and that's where the word coke, C-O-K-E, came from. And why we still used to refer it to it as Pepsi Coca Cola and Coke a Cola because of our recollections to the cola taste. As a matter of fact, one of those two companies is the world's largest importer of Coke, legalized Coke, the Coca leaves, because they use it in that product in what form formulation we don't know. Formaldehyde, that's what they usually use to preserve bodies or body parts or specimens. That's also in there. High fructose corn syrup, I have a specific video on that topic and all of its hyroid after effects and its effects on the human body of the storage of sugars essentially makes you fat. Potassium benzoate and food dyes. There's a substantial body of literature on food dyes and the effect of children. Next slide. What does soda pop do to our bodies? I'll have to confess, I have a soda pop once in a while. But to consume it over and over and over with a wild flair for addiction, what does it result in? I'm going to postulate to you, and you can see if it makes sense or not. You can call me crazy. You can call me a communist. You can call me any name you'd like. The bottom line is when you see huge obese people, particularly huge obese monster children, I will postulate that they consume inordinate amounts of sugar from soda pop. And there are other chemicals that are stored in their bodies. If you look at the first cartoon on the left, it's humorous and yet ironic and tragic at the same time. Oh yeah, a diet soda too, means also, when he's ordering these, his food. Well, the fact is we're all that same format, that all that same shape. We used to call it sugar water. Look at that child in the middle. Does that represent what your child is or will become? An addict to soda sugar water? Now, the ad on the right is indicative of the tragedy that's in our modern consumeristic society in the big gulp drink. Now, that's obviously comic, comic relief, how large the size is. But look at his body. It's very similar to a majority of people here, at least in the United States. Is soda pop a part of a healthy meal? That's a question you need to ask yourself when at the counter of ordering fast food or at a restaurant, 
you are asked, what would you like to drink? And that implication is, would you like a soda pop? Which one, Coke or Pepsi? And they always say the same thing. And there's a joke that goes along with that. I always ask for Dr. Pepper. And they say, oh, no, we only have Mr. Pibb. I said, oh, well, Mr. Pibb didn't graduate from dental school, now did he? And it's not a very funny joke, but it's something I remind myself that it is a commercial moniker to call a beverage doctor. Does soda pop help you lose fat and gain muscle? You hear that on almost every health commercial. Oh, it helps you to lose fat and gain muscle. The opposite is my postulate to you. You may, may seem unreasonable, it may seem irrational, and it may seem totally irrelevant, but does soda pop help you to lose fat and gain muscle? My postulate to you, my proposition is no. You're gonna gain fat and your muscle will wear away. Next slide. Well, look at the, peop the person represented in that comic relief picture on the right. Are you becoming that person? Oh, that person was naturally born that way, Andy. Their whole family looks like that. That's possible. That's possible. But the fact is, if you look at the side effects of soda on that graphic on the left, and I have the link there, we, we hear the same exact things. All of those chemicals result in that body on the right. If you desire that body, good. Go for it. My suggestion to you in this segment is that you use your own brain, protect your body, look over the rainbow, do you see that? As a result of your practice of ordering and making for yourself a sweetened soda water, soda pop, soda beverage, plain beverage, either Coke or Pepsi. And I ask you to think about it for your own well-being in the light of previous segments that I've given about diabetes as well and cancer. Thank you very much.